Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey, MJ friends, hope you're doing well. We're going to check in on the major names here. CGC, ACB, APH, Cron, TLRY, NBEV is the new TLRY in town in terms of hype and massive hysteria. And then we'll look at the IPO RIV, which did not really give opportunity, and it was better off skipping that one as far as short-term trading is concerned, as far as volatility is concerned. So I put out a video earlier today comparing crypto to MJ and how the hype cycles are very similar. Just some thoughts there and pretty much just a word of caution for everybody that is following the herd and trying to get into Canadian MJ now when CNBC is talking about it every day. So check out that video and let's get into it. So in the video yesterday, highlighted how the key level of support we are watching first thing today is the low of the consolidation dump. If the bulls can hold that level, that is our higher low on the four hour time frame. They certainly held it and we could see that they were going to hold it. We could see that it was likely that we would hold it with how the after hours action was going and that's because the bears didn't gain any traction after hours yesterday so if we're going to close multiple dollars above key support and not see any downside in the after hours trading we can assume that the bulls are likely going to hold that level to start the morning which they did had some nice short-term trading opportunity and the four hour chart did give us a little higher low and then continuation move here so we did see a, a stutter step and some consolidation and continuation and what that was is the hourly chart essentially changing the trend so here's when we started trading, we saw profit taking, we established a new support level to be watching. So before it was 46.20 is the must hold. Now the short term support is 48.54 on CGC inside bar bull break. And the bulls did not look back. And what's notable here is the increasing bull volume. That's a good sign. So the key resistances we're going to be watching from here are up at 53.79, 55.69, 56.23. So bulls still got it at this point. We've got Bruce on CNBC tomorrow morning, I believe. CNBC is going to be talking about MJ stocks after hours here again. They're pretty much talking about it again every single day. So it's important to note who's going to be on because we see pumps related to that. T-God had the pump. I believe that was yesterday. Things are going really fast these days. But T-God pumps. We've seen CGC pump a bunch. TLRY has pumped. So keep an eye on who is going to be on CNBC. Personally, I don't watch CNBC because number one, if you watch it every day, you will go insane from the repeating commercials. And number two, it's just a lot of noise and talking heads and they try and fill, you know, airtime when there's nothing going on with a whole bunch of noise, but it is useful in some instances. And this is one of those areas where it is useful to see which names, which companies are coming on the air. So CMB or C CGC has the bulls in full control, but we don't have an hourly support nearby. 48.54 is the last nearby support, so we have to zoom in to a shorter term time frame to find these support levels, and it's on the 15-minute chart, 51.29 and 51.01. Traded CGC a bunch today at least 10 times and used shorter term time frames, obviously, but it was the start of the day that gave the clear setup, and $50 psychological support held and then we saw a little bit of a bounce off that level. And then we came back and held it again. So I played a bottom fishing play. And what that is, is when you enter just above a key support level and you enter your stop just below that level. So I entered this trade maybe in the 50 teens and I would have exited instantly if $50 broke. Fortunately, it did not. The bull showed up, locked in that profit for a solid start to the day. And then I did go bearish here on the break of 50, because when you hold the double bottom twice, it's very clear that's the low of the day, that's the must hold level for the bulls to keep full control. We lost that level. That's a very clear short signal. If you go bearish and enter short right when $50 breaks, you know at the very least you can get a quick flip for a scalp for a small gain. And at best case scenario, you obviously get a solid amount of follow through. We got solid follow through. So I entered puts, I believe it was $50 puts, as soon as $50, actually I entered it right before $50 broke because I was very confident that $50 was going to break just watching the price action and watching what the volume was doing. And so I entered just before 50 broke and then I scaled out. It wasn't a huge gain. It was maybe 8% or so, but that is the way that I'm playing the sector bearish when there are clear setups. So I'll capture that bear move. And then I did play it bullish again 
uh, later in the day, including at the end of the day here on this end of the day run up. And I played ECB at the end of the day as well. I am all cash again into tomorrow. We closed strong enough that you could definitely justify swinging overnight. Absolutely. But for me, it's just been an incredible five days in a row and I'm going to keep those gains and do it all again tomorrow. So CGC on the 15 minute, we have those support levels, the resistance most clear on the hourly. So I would look at 15 minute supports. I would look at a couple hourly resistances and I would be surprised if the bulls are able to V-shaped recovery and break 56.23 on their first attempt. Granted, this sector in the last couple weeks has given surprises in terms of what is normal uh, price action and what we anticipate on these charts. And we see eight times out of 10, these two times out of 10 is what the Canadian MJ sector is doing. And that's because institutions are using big money and that big money is influencing the charts and allowing for RSI levels to get overextended and allowing for brief consolidation. So if any sector can just see continuation, it's obviously Canadian MJ. But if I'm looking at this chart and you don't tell me what sector it is, I would say, yes, look for a four hour lower high and a continued tightening range. So that is something that's going to be in the back of my mind tomorrow and into Monday. We have quadruple witching in the markets, which is when a bunch of options and a bunch of futures expire. Google uh, quadruple witching if you don't know what that is and learn something. And we have seen in the past that it creates volatility in the markets. That's worth watching as well. Again, while we're not seeing direct correlation with the S&P 500 in terms of tick for tick action, like we've seen in the past, it's definitely a factor. And the fact that we're at all time high blue sky breakout and saw a 0.8% day in the market definitely helped the bulls today, in my opinion. So it is something to be keeping an eye on. And we'll see if that volatility tomorrow does play a factor. ACB had the strongest close at the end of the day. And actually, CGC was pretty strong as well. There were a couple strong closes, but ACB, definitely strong. Inside bars on the daily as well. So CGC, inside bar on the daily. Want to break the hive today, first thing tomorrow. ACB, same thing. We're going to test that 1256 level. If we break 1256, we zoom way back to find the next resistances. And there's not a ton of them up here. I would be looking at 1255. Wow, I didn't even notice that one, actually. That's a very clear double top from yesterday. 1256 and 1255. Next resistance after that, there's a little gap at 1281, and then we're looking up at 1375. So 1281, 13, 1375 next levels. Bulls are very strong. The hourly chart, again, lack of consolidation, but the slight increase in bull volume is a good sign for the bulls. So we zoom into the 15 minute time frame to find clear supports. It's 1154 and 1141 as two support levels that stand out and resistance in the short term. 1225, which is right where we closed, 1256, and then those levels I just gave. Still hype on ACB. There's still significant institutions at play here. People are looking for that next deal, whether it's going to be ACB, APH, or Cron, who knows? ACB earnings are next week on the 25th. People are hoping that perhaps a deal is going to come out that day, like CGC did. We'll see. All speculation, all hype, who knows? But we know these companies are going to see deals, right? It's just a question of who and when. And. That's what's keeping a lot of this hype alive. So 15 minute supports, hourly resistances, APH. So APH is a nice pattern on the daily with our high of the bull move, low of consolidation, lower high, and the bulls are looking to form this higher low here, but they need a little bit more convincing follow through. Support right now, 1857, great bottom fishing play with the low of yesterday. So highlighted how that low of the dump is important key support and the bulls did hold that just barely. Held it by three pennies. So that's a bottom fishing play. If you enter at, you know, 1865 and say, I will exit if 1857 breaks, you are currently in a really nice position. So the hourly time frame, a solid little bounce here. Resistance is 2012, followed by 2089 and 2158. APH is definitely seeing a little bit of a laggard play here. And I'm just looking at percentages. ACB up 13%. Canopy up six and a half. A uh, cron up over eight TLRY obviously dumping. We'll look at that in just a moment, but uh, APH only up three and a half. So clearly lagging the other names the past few days and going to keep an eye on who's strongest, who's weakest, because we did see ACB weakest and then it played the laggard catch up game. Let's see if APH and actually cron did the same thing as well. Cron was the weakest on the bounce Friday and Monday and then played catch up. Let's see if APH plays catch up as well, but 15 minute supports 1961. 1932. First two support levels to be watching. Increasing bull volume. 
key resistance tests as well. I like the 15 minute for clarity on APH because it has the clear support and resistance levels right nearby. And the other time frames or the other names, I like the little bit longer time frames, the hourly. Cron on the daily, daily inside bar to be watching tomorrow. Hourly chart, not as extended. A little bit more of a stair step pattern, very low volume, not increasing bull volume like we see in these other names. So what I'm watching right now is these levels. Are these levels? So we got our high, low of the pullback, high of the bounce, higher low. This is the range. Support is $12.71. Resistance is $14. We're much closer to a resistance break than a support break. We still just have to break that level tomorrow. So we're looking at 14 and then 14.85. And as far as support goes, 15 minute time frame gives some clear levels. 1338, 1328, 13, nope. 3828, and then 12.93. So again, 15 minute time frame is giving us the most clear support levels on all these tickers so far. And we got a nice tight range to be watching on Cron, which the Bulls are going to try and break tomorrow. And I actually have a bear attack right now. Seeing CGC's down to 52 right now after hours. So down about a percent. Sorry, just checking in the other names to see if it's specific to CGC. Cron not seeing a whole lot of pullback. It seems specific to CGC. Doesn't look like a major event right now. Just something to be keeping an eye on. And let's see that on the chart real quick here. Extended hours. So this action right now is going on after hours. Again, not a lot of volume behind it, but definitely seeing a little bit of weakness. We'll have to keep an eye on it into tomorrow morning and that CNBC segment. TLRY, continued consolidation. And this is one where, man, I was kicking myself a bit because it was a very clear setup. Again, bottom fishing play. And the very clear support that the Bulls needed to maintain was the low of the dump, 151.40, and I had my buy order filled out. I had a, as soon as 160 broke, I was going to look to make that entry and I hesitated. And then once I hesitate and once I, you know, stray from my game plan, I just scrap that trade because the last thing I want to be doing is making decisions on the fly relating to my emotions and trying to make up and make a poor, uh, a less than ideal entry than I had originally and trying to play catch up. But it would have ended up being a really nice entry. And if I had made that entry on that 160 break, we would have gone, let's see, where was that? That was this one. And we went from 158 up to 185 in the next 35 minutes. So that was a really nice trade opportunity there. And again, it was looking to play this support level. I personally was probably waiting for it to get a little bit closer so the risk wouldn't be as high. You know, if I did enter at 160, stopping out on a break of 151, a $10, $9, $10 loss would be very significant for me. So that's probably the reasoning in the back of my subconscious as to why I held off on this. And of course, TLRY, we saw the flush yesterday. I did not want to get in a flush today. So basically just skipping the really high risk, high reward trade. And that's fine. We did have a bull break here of an equilibrium on the five minute time frame. That bull signal was at 179.50. We got up to 188 after that. But then end of the day, profit taking. So where this leaves us on the hourly time frame is we have our high of the all time high, low of the dump, high of the bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low. So this is the range we're watching on the 15 minute time frame. We can see it got tight. Support is 166.55. Resistance is 188. That's the tightest range to be watching. If we break 188, there's nice space to the upside. If we break 166, we're looking down at 165 and 158, and then the 151.40 level. So bulls have some nice space if we can get this bull break. Definitely want to see the sector bullish as well if the bulls do make this break. There's definitely correlations with TLRY and CGC. And today in the chat room, we were trying to figure out who's leading right now because dollar volume in TLRY is still massive and just doing some rough math. Let's see, we're talking about $4 billion traded today and 1 billion, we're talking. Yeah, probably more, more dollar volume in the last two days than CGC. And I'm comparing CGC both Canadian and US dollar volume, but uh, it was, we were watching, you know, who's leading. And there was uh, an instance where the sector decoupled from TLRY, where TLRY on the two minute time frame was still seeing weakness and the sector was CGC, saw a two minute higher low and higher high. So everybody followed CGC on that bull break and TLRY still showed some weakness. And if you are in this sector, you absolutely want to see that happen because the worst case scenario is if this TLRY weakness and bubble popping is going to weigh on the entire sector. But fortunately, we did not see that today. And that is a big sigh of relief for any bulls in this space right now. 
So that's the range that we're watching on TLRY. Pretty tight range. Let's go to the IPO next. So RIV, R-I-V, R-I-V dot V. There was trading opportunity here, but honestly, you want to wait for the range to be established. I can't tell you. It's it, it hurts me to think about how many people just instantly bought in at the open rather than waiting for a price level to be established. You've got to wait for the range established. Otherwise, you are just gambling. And we are not here to gamble. We are here to have some odds in our favor. I guess we are gambling, but we want the odds in our favor. So we need the ranges established. And we set the low of the day. We set the high. There's our range right there. So 760 on the low. And the high of the bounce is 998. So that's the range you're watching for the rest of the day. And look at that. We're still in it. So nothing happened after the first hour of trading. And there was no opportunity there. So a lack of volatility, really, and boring compared to what other names were doing. So if you were short-term trading and look for, looking for volatility, it was in all these other names. It was not in this IPO. And the spinoff of the ACB shares also did not have a ton of opportunity to get a little bit of recovery today. So again, there is opportunity around, but I'm just sticking to the bigger names due to liquidity and due to ease. Again, I don't want these higher risk, higher reward plays. I'm going to stick with what's been working really well, and that's trading CGC, ACBFF, and uh, the rest of the big players. If the smaller players are working for you, absolutely stick with it. It's just not my style right now. So this is the range to be watching for tomorrow. And we could even get a tighter range on the 15 minute time frame. New resistance, 949 and support 863. So 863 to 949 is the range to be watching. And Bev, so look at that chart. Increasing bull volume is a great sign. You do not want to be, again, this is one that's just multiple gap ups in a row. And we ran out of nowhere, 160 up to 780 in just a couple days. So multiple hundreds of percent gains. We're going to see the bubble pop here as well. Just a question of when, who knows when. Checking the weekly time frame to see previous price levels. We're at all-time highs. So $8 psychological resistance. Every time we gap up, obviously, there is a lot of risk on any entries for the bulls at this point. And also make note that every single open, we have 10 minutes of consolidation at least. So higher open consolidation. Higher open, 10 minutes of consolidation. Here we had a half hour of consolidation. So we closed very strong. We are in bull euphoric mode. If I were in this position... I would be walking up stop losses aggressively. I would not care if I got stopped out and it kept running because again, this is TLRY in the making just in the sense that when we do see a temporary top, we are going to pull back 20, 30% very quickly. So there's no indication that that's coming just yet, but TLRY was its strongest just before the all out dump. Keep that in mind. And again, this is an extremely high risk name and high reward name, but every day we see further upside, that reward to risk ratio uh, shifts more to favor risk. Support at this point is 690 and resistance is $8 and the bulls are on absolute fire. So there's a nice trading opportunity here as well. The five minute time frame, just higher lows and higher highs. So here on this initial bull break, we established a higher low. We traded sideways, got real tight. And then when we broke 634, just like that, we're up to 695. So a 10% move in five minutes on that bull break. And that's one thing that I've been trading. You know, I do a lot of scalping and short-term flips the last five days. And I've been doing that with new high of the day. And generally when we break the high of the day, specifically on CGC, but most names, there's a push of follow through because traders like me are buying that bull break. And personally, I just end up selling it right quickly after. I don't care if it keeps running. I just want that guaranteed lock in, you know, day maker consistently do it again and again and again. And uh, that is a trade that has worked out well. And this is an example where NBEV would have had that as well. A new high of the day bull break, especially when you're in or approaching blue sky, usually gets a solid amount of follow through. And that was the instance here. So bottom line is bulls closed very strong tomorrow. We've got CNBC coverage tomorrow morning, which should probably have us open a little bit higher. We'll be watching for CGC profit taking right on the open, which has been a consistent pattern. And buying that dip has been a consistent pattern as well. So I'll be watching for that as an entry opportunity. The setup this morning was not clear because we didn't get a weak start. We got a bit of a, a decent strength start. So I said to myself, I'm going to be trading a lot less today than I did yesterday. And that's just because of the setup. We have to know when to go very aggressive when the setups are clear. And we have to know when to scale back and to not go as aggressive when it is not as clear. So heading into tomorrow, if we see higher opens, I almost ended up swinging my ACB position, but it was one of those instances where, again, last five days couldn't have asked for a better five days. And I have no reason to, to risk it. I'm just going to continue doing my thing. So tomorrow, if we see a higher open, 
The first trade that I'll be looking for is profit taking on CGC and to buy that dip. Otherwise, I'm going to sit back, remain very cautious, and wait for the clear setups to present themselves to me. And again, if you keep the same aggressiveness of trading when the setups differ and change, you're going to end up giving back a lot of profit. So I appreciate you all watching. Here at the end of the video here, we got another Iceland clip, some more waterfalls, and we are going to get further inland in Iceland shortly. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you all continue to do good things out there, and we'll see you tomorrow.